Please stand. In the name of him who is and who was and who is to come, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my dear friends who have been bought and purchased from sin and death by his holy and precious blood. The word of the Lord to which we, were, we will direct our attention at this time tonight for our meditation is taken from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 through 16. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have, and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The, the jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is the word of our God. Please be seated. The economy across the nation has completely crashed and has put you in a pinch. You've lost your job. You've lost your house. And due to illness, you've lost your spouse. You're the sole caretaker of a six-year-old child. You've been living out of a tent and for a cook stove, you've been using a barrel with a grate over top. And today, of all days now, you're down to your last $10. So you've made up your mind that you're going to go to the discount grocery store, buy a big bag of rice, and whatever meat is cheap in the discount bay of the little refrigerator section, and go home, eat it, and after that, who knows when you will eat again. So on your way to the discount food store, there's an old man who waves his hand at you to get your attention, and perhaps you're thinking, well, maybe he has a handout for me. But it's just the opposite. He says, do you have some money you could spare for me to buy groceries? But you tell him, well, this is my last $10, and I'm going to buy food for myself and my child, and after that, we have nothing to live on. But he says to you, no, why don't you go take that $10, buy some food for me, and then buy some food for yourself and your son with the leftovers. Would you do it? Would you do as he asked? Well, that's the very situation that the widow in the lesson that is before us found herself in. Famine had spread throughout the land. She was down to the last little handful of flour in a jar and a couple measures of oil in her jug. After that, she had nothing left. And a man came to her asking for a drink of water. His name was Elijah. And he says to her, give me a drink of water. 
She says, okay. And as she's heading to do so, he says, and bring me some bread while you're at it. And with that, she turns around and says, I don't have bread. In fact, I'm going to make one last little loaf with the sticks I'm carrying. And then me and my son, we're going we're gonna to starve. That's it. We give up. It's going to be over. But then the man says to her, before you make anything for yourself and your son, make a cake of bread for me. Then after that, make some for yourself and your son. Would you do that if you were her? Would you take food from the, son, or from the mouth of your son, from your child, and give it to a total stranger? Would you do it? Well, perhaps maybe the better question to ask at this time is, have you done it when you've been in those circumstances? When someone has asked you to give up some of your precious time, have you given it? When someone has asked for a handout from you to help with food or, or rent, Have you said yes, or have you said no, even though your cupboards and your refrigerator and freezer and your closets are full and perhaps even overflowing? Ashamedly, I have to admit that there are occasions when I've said no. And why? Because... On some occasions, I was afraid that the little I had would not be enough to supply my needs or the needs of those I was responsible for down the road. And even worse, there were occasions when I was afraid that the much that I had might not be enough for way down the road. So what would you do if you were this woman? What did she do? Well, she told Elijah her situation. She recognized who he was. And you have to understand that she recognized why her situation was the way it was, too. Notice what she said to Elijah. As surely as the Lord your God lives. And then she goes on and talks about her poverty. Notice how she speaks about the God of Elijah. He's your God. He's not my God, he's yours. And you know what, God's, what Elijah's God had done? He had sent this famine. And the famine was there because of Elijah's people. The famine was a chastisement from God upon the nation of Israel and especially upon their wicked king and queen, Ahab and Jezebel. And the Lord had announced through Elijah that the rain would stop until further notice. And so what we see in this world is that there are occasions when God's blessings poured out on the righteous spill over onto the unrighteous. And on the flip side, God in his wisdom on occasion allows his judgment, his chastisement upon the rebellious to overflow onto the righteous, those who believe in him. Just as it had done with Elijah. Remember how this lesson started? He was at a brook where God was sending ravens to drop food they had scavenged to him, and the brook dried up. He had no more water, so he had to leave. God's judgment on Israel was falling on Elijah, and now God sends him to this widow, and the judgment that God has sent on Israel, on Elijah's God, was falling on and making life miserable for this widow. And life for a widow was hard to start with, but doubly hard, several times harder when times were tough. As surely as the Lord your God lives. The God of Israel 
was the God who had placed this heavy burden upon her. And yet, what do we see her doing? We're told that she takes Elijah at his word. Elijah said that there would be enough oil in her jug, enough flour in her jar to make bread for her and her son after she made bread for him. And that the flour in her jar and the oil in her jug would not run out for months to come until the Lord sent rain on the land. Why did she believe that? Well, it's because she had recognized that that drought, that famine had come according to the word of the Lord. God had threatened Ahab and Jezebel with a drought unless they repented, unless they turned from their ways. And he made good on his threat, didn't he? The rain stopped. And the God who kept his word when it came to the threat, she also believed would keep his word when it came to the promise. And so we are told that there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. She stood on the promise of God, didn't she? And did God let her down? The answer is no. God continued to provide for this woman and Elijah throughout the rest of the time of famine, and it might have been over a year yet. Imagine that, still just enough flour for one more loaf of bread, still just enough oil to mix it all together again, and it went on and on and on. The Lord made good on his word. So again, what would you do if you were in this woman's shoes? As I said before, there are many times when you and I have fallen short of what God expects of us, of the opportunities he has put before us to help those in need, because we are afraid that what we have won't be enough. But what God teaches us in this lesson is that his grace is sufficient. That the Lord our God is able to take the little that we have and to make it enough. Not just for ourselves, but even for others. King David observed that in his own lifetime too. In Psalm 37, he said, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. God's grace is sufficient. And Paul said to the Christians at Philippi, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God's grace is sufficient. This widow, she didn't have kebabs and caviar, but throughout the drought, she had bread. She had enough. And the same God who kept his promise to provide enough for her will also continue to keep his promises to provide enough for you and for me. And where we've fallen short, where we have ashamedly been stingy because we've been doubtful of God's promises, because we've been afraid that he can't keep his word, once again, we go back to our Lord and realize his grace is sufficient. Above all, it's sufficient in Jesus. Because, you see, God has credited Jesus' generosity and Jesus' trust to you and to me through faith. And it's sufficient so that you are holy and pleasing and pure in his sight. And on the flip side, we're told in Scripture, 
that the punishment that brought us peace was put on him, was put on Jesus. And what that means is that God took his presence away from his own son, Jesus, so that you could live in his presence forever. So could you seemingly take bread from the mouth of one of your children to give it to a stranger? In Christ, you could. And you can. Because his grace is sufficient. In our gospel lesson, there were 5,000 men together with their family members listening to Jesus preach and teach. And Jesus had tested his disciples. Feed them. And they're, <laughs> they're going, how? There's too many. Andrew comes with his little boy. He's got five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. But in the hands of Jesus, it's enough, more than enough, to feed that entire group of people so that there are 12 basketfuls of food left over. Brothers and sisters, that is the power of your God and my God. And when in life you are tested and you are tempted and doubt and fear are seizing your heart and mind because you don't know or you don't think that God will provide, then not only look to the past of Scripture, but look to your own past. Have you had some slim times? Some occasions where the bank account was on zero, or maybe even negative. You had a, you had a balance on your credit card. You wondered how were you going to pay it all off? Well, you're still here. And for some of you who don't have much of a past to look back to, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents. They all have stories. They all have a story of how the Lord, their God, took care of their needs during their time of need when things were slim, when they didn't have much. And God brought them through. Because as always, God's grace is sufficient. It's enough. And so it's with that in our hearts and minds that you and I can go forward in our lives, and if we find ourselves in a position like that widow of Zarephath, we can be generous because we know that he who did not withhold his own son for us or from us will certainly give us all things. And that he has freed us from self-service so that we can be like him, generous like he is, forgiving like he is, and helpful like he is. So that even though you're busy already and someone says, do you have time to help? Trust that the Lord will give you enough strength to give the help. Even though your pocketbook is slim and someone says, hey, can you spare a little bit for me? Trust that the Lord, from whose hand you've received the little, will also give you much as needed, right? As much as you need. As David said, I was young and now I am old, and yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. May God be with you, guard you, and guide you as you go forward so that like the widow of Zarephath, you may live your life recognizing that with the Lord, even a little will always be enough. Because the Lord is able to make much and do much with just a little. Amen. Please stand.